No my, how are you, my everybody? And thank you for coming along tonight. And thank you very much, Fiona, for coming along to help get us organised. Because I have to say, it is one thing I need, having just done a trip up to Auckland and a lightning. Well, it wasn't, I had a, a day in the FRC, but I had an hour I could do research and I had no organisation whatsoever. So thank you, Fiona. This is what we're all going to need. You're welcome, Sarah. OK, um, I'm going to dive into this. This link um, is in the chat for um, those that may have oh, missed it. Um, if you miss it off the screen, I'm just going to put it back in the chat for anyone that has come in after that last posting. Um, and we'll grab, get started. Right now, um, shall I get everybody to turn their cameras and microphones off? I know it's annoying speaking into the void, but... Uh, I'm happy if people have questions, feel free to turn your mic on and ask me questions as we go along because I don't okay. want you to get lost behind. But yeah, if you want to mute while everyone is um, sitting here, that's all cool. Yep. So if everybody would like to mute themselves. Um, I've also got the chat open. So if you've got any questions that aren't urgent for me to answer and you want to put them there while you remember, feel free to type them into the chat as we go along because I can see them there as well and I might even get them. So yes, I was asked to come along and talk about getting organised for the new year, but I'm also really aware that you guys are a writing group, so I'm going to make it sort of slant towards that side of things. So it's time to celebrate. Um, it's New Year's Eve 2024. What will you have achieved with your family history? So, you know, it's, it's time, you know, that time when you, you sit there and you go, oh, look what I've done this year. Um, so what will you have achieved this time next year? Well, hopefully, if um, I set you up right tonight, maybe quite a lot. So let's start with the fact that I have given you some worksheets that you can use. Um, I'm going to bring mine up on the screen um, because you won't see me scribbling on my version on the desktop. And I've broken these goals setting into four different parts. There's the, the researching part, there's DNA for some of us, there is the organisation side of things, and then there is the sharing. And I know you guys are all about the sharing. So what I'd like you to do is find the sheet, first of all, that looks like this if you've got the coloured version, or in the black and white version you'll find a sheet that has this year and it has all the months down the side of it. And what I want you to do to start off with is I want you to sit there and just think about what are the big things that are happening next year for you that are probably family history related, but they may not be because maybe there are other big things happening in your family situation or holidays that you're planning or that sort of thing, which will mean that you'll be dragged away from doing family history next year for a period of time. So start by putting those big things in. Now, what do I mean by big things, you might be saying? Well, here's some examples for me. Um, I know that in March, Roots Tech will be on. Now, although I'd love to say I was going to Roots Tech, I'm not. Like many of you, I'm going to be sitting here at my computer um, watching it. But I also know that because of that, there will be lots of videos to watch. There'll be lots of education time to be spent and things like that. I know that August is Family History Month. That means that I'll be involved in doing some Family History Month things, whether it's the Expo up in Auckland, um, whether it's events here in Christchurch where I live, whether it's events around somewhere else in the country. And in fact, if I was probably thinking about it, I might put something down for October because I don't know if you've noticed, but in New Zealand, we seem to be getting a lot of um, heritage months all appearing in October. And so there's often a lot of events happening in October as well. So just start with thinking about what are those big events that you might be involved. And then someone can tell me that they're going on a big overseas trip next year and we can then feel all jealous. Does anyone want to put their hand up for that? And feel free not, you're obviously not going to be sharing this on the screen. Um, it is being recorded, so don't get too specific if you are going away um, overseas. I'm just going to Canada. give you a minute. Okay, what do you we're, got, off Bobby? To, we're off to Japan and Canada. We're going to Japan, off. Japan because um, 
my dad was there with the occupational forces after the war and Bry has um, transcribed his diaries and they've been published. Oh, sounds fantastic. So you know that that period of time, you're going to be really busy either in the lead up to it, sorting out what you need to take and just getting organised, and yeah. then while you're actually away as well. Um, although it sounds like you are doing sort of family history while you're away, which is really cool. Yeah. Okay, so it's that sort of thing that you want to get on there because that has an effect on what else you plan during the year. Now, some of you may have significant birthdays or significant family anniversaries that you may want to celebrate. So you may be planning reunions. Um, there may be gifts that you need to give to someone or write or do things like that. So if you've got time, things like that, that you need to know about, you want to put this on this big calendar as well. Okay. So now we're going to dive into sort of looking at what our goals might be for next year. So, for example, do you have some goals that are associated with your DNA results? Um, you may have, for here's my example, I want to review the matches that link Hector Matheson to his mother and maternal grandparents and write that up as a report. So I actually want to do some writing, but it's linked to my DNA results because by doing that, I may find that I'm actually able to work out the holes, work out some of the proof that I've been looking at and needing, and just understand how that all needs to go together. Um, so you may have some DNA goals like that. It may just be organising those DNA results. It may be, um, what else could you have in your DNA results? It may be that you plan to move from take your results from Ancestry and put them onto MyHeritage and learn how to use a different website, for example. Uh, it may be that you've decided that why DNA testing is going to be your focus next year and you need to find some people who might want to test with you. Um, and all of this leads to what our end result will be, which will potentially be some writing somewhere along the line. So you may have some DNA goals. But some of us we're going back to our more traditional research. So you may have some other research goals that you need or you want to do. Um, so this is traditional family history research, I guess, although it obviously can be linked to your DNA as well. Um, so think about what sort of goals you might have. So mine is linked to my DNA one because now I need to review the records that link Hector Matheson to his mother and maternal grandparents and write that up as a report. Hector's been my black brick wall for a long time, so actually getting something into a, a proof statement can be a really good way of getting it all out and just going, have I actually worked this out or have I got a great big hole? So maybe write down some research goals if you haven't written down some DNA goals. those that might have come in a little bit late. This is where they're all writing their goals are on the sheets here that from that link that I've just put in the chat. Now, of course, the worst thing is because you've all got your cameras off and I can't see how many of you are now sitting there twiddling your thumbs compared to how many of you are sitting there writing down goals still, the tutor always has this great need to speak when things are quiet. So if you need some more time, can you shout out that you need some more time because you've got so many research goals? OK, I'm going to go with the fact that yes, someone has written some and you've got something scratched on your piece of paper. OK, let's look at the next section of goals then. Let's talk about organising goals. 
Now, organising can be a whole lot of different things. Um, but for me, this goal is to actually file the Brooker and Tremuan family history paperwork that I have inherited. So my in-laws moved into a smaller place. Um, my mother-in-law in particular has been doing the family history for a number of years. And I think her paperwork probably is more than my paperwork um, because she's printed lots and lots of emails off when they've been working on some of these bigger lines. So I have lots of boxes of paperwork that need to be filed. Um, but some of you may have some other little organising goals because the other one that's on my list at the moment is to organise photographs. Um, they seem to also be attracted to my house and I've inherited several sets of photos from different people as well. So they all need a bit of a tidy up and a bit of a sort and a bit of a decision about what I want to do with all of those photos. Um, some of them are direct and some of them aren't. So do you have an organisation goal? Do you have files on your computer that need to be named? Do you need to set up a backup system for your family history work so that it's actually backed up? Did you have this vague plan that you might go paperless and you plan to scan every piece of paper in your folders and put them all online or all on your computer? That's certainly a dream goal. Yeah, Janet, I think that is a dream goal. Um, and I'm not 100% convinced yet that going fully digital is actually a safe thing. I think I've been watching too many videos recently about archiving um, and whether digital archiving is a good thing or not. Whole nother discussion, of course. Anyone else managed to find an organisation goal that they can write down on there? We'll talk a little bit more about those too. OK, what about some sharing goals? Now, you guys are a writing group, so I would hope that there is a sharing goal in here. I call them sharing goals because my whole philosophy is we need to actually get the family history out of the computer and into the hands of the people that um, we've been doing it for for so long. But I know that there is this great need to get things finished. Um, one that we've been working on is an updated Brooker family history. It was last printed and created in 1991 when we had a reunion. And um, I've been really lucky because my mother-in-law has been doing lots of the research. She just now needs someone in this household, whether it's me, my husband or my son, or even my daughter, to actually do the formatting of it now and make it all ready to actually publish. So that is on our list of goals to do. I um, don't quite know how I share this goal so well with the rest of the family. Um, the other goal that's sitting there at the moment is to create a photo book of the photos that I inherited from my mum for my brother so that he's got a version of the photos as well. So if you're thinking that maybe some of these goals sound like something that's going to happen in your household or you've got a writing goal, that would be really cool. And then I've thought of another one that's sort of linked to that, which is I've actually gone back and written it on my DNA goals. Because I'm doing the Brooker book, I really need to contact all the Brooker DNA matches to make sure I can place them in the tree. Um, and advise them of the family history book update because I know my mother-in-law has got lots of them, but also a lot of those um, DNA matches are younger. So they actually come in at a different level than um, a lot of what we've already got in the book. And then that brings up a whole lot of privacy issues. So that's a, another discussion again. Okay, so who managed to get some goals? Feel free to turn your mic on. Um, and tell me one of the goals that's sitting on your list. Is anyone there ready to speak or will I? Go, Bobby. Right. Um, I'm trying to get together um, information on my granddad 
and I have been decided that I'm going to keep sending out these emails to my cousins, whether they want it or not, just to tell them where I'm up to with the bits of research I'm doing, so that if anything comes back, they can't say, but we didn't know about that, or you didn't give us an opportunity. And so on the whole, they've been actually quite keen and, and things, or otherwise they're just quite happy to get the information and not have to do anything. Well, that sounds really cool because that's both a sharing goal and actually it's an organising goal at the same time, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because you're organising them as much as anything else. Um, Di, I think you've taken your mic off mute. Yeah, we had a family reunion um, 150 years last month in Gore and I did all the organising using Facebook as the contacts. 70 people turned up. But I wrote out that there was 580 people over the age of 18 who are eligible to come to that reunion. We had a good response from it. So I've now, and I did a PowerPoint presentation that I thought would take half an hour. It took 75 minutes to do. Now it was all done from my head, so it's not actually written down. So one of my goals is to write up what I spoke about at that reunion. Um, and a, one of the cousins actually suggested doing photo books for each of the five branches of the family. But by doing that, that is a great idea because I, I can actually just, you know, be for the people now. But that's not something that can be put into an archive because it's going to have living people in it and privacy won't allow that. So there's a couple of things I've got to work towards with that. Sounds great. Um, and one thing you might find you want to do even is since you've got the PowerPoint, you could actually go on to something like Teams or on to Zoom and actually record yourself talking to the PowerPoint. And then you'll have a video recording of it as well, which would be quite cool. Thank you. I didn't think of that. Yeah, and, and I think now there's nice things that will even transcribe what you're saying as well or you could have an app open on your phone transcribing what you're saying at the same time. Yes, as long as it doesn't make treacle into icicles and, <laughs> minutes, and minutes into months. We've had that that's, with AI. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Anyone else want to share a goal? Oh, you've all gone quiet on me. OK, so let's dive on a little bit further then. So we've got some goals. So now that we've got said goals, what do you need to be able to succeed in actually getting those goals achieved at the other end of the year? And these are four things that I sort of thought are things that would actually help me with some of these goals. So I break them down into four basic parts. One is a bit of a time thing. Second one is a bit of organisation. The third is education and the fourth is a plan. And so let's start with looking at time. So if you are following along in the printouts, you will find that you have the ability to break your goals down into little parts. So you might take one of your goals and break it down over each month, February, March, April, May, etc. And you've got room to put 12 months on that set of goals. Um, so, for example, my DNA one for the Brookers might be in February, I might message them. But it might be April before I actually start to look at reviewing those messages, etc. to actually build them into the family history book. Um, I might respond in the middle, don't worry about that. But it gives me time and makes me think about what I need to give time to in there. Um, I might want to, one thing we started actually many years ago is with all our photo negatives, we started writing a one page summary of what photos they were. So that if we needed to go and make copies, we could actually find them. And I quite like to finish up that wee job because that was actually quite successful. Um, and I know we don't have negative sheets any longer. Um, it might be May until I get to my DNA matches. So how are you going to break up and split up your year? Remembering also 
those big things that are going to happen, like your trips, like Roots Tech, like Family History Month, all of those things that might take your family history time away from working on your goals. Okay, now I know I probably haven't given you enough time to break all those down all the way down. But the other thing to think about with time is sometimes you've got like five minutes you can do something in. Sometimes you've got 15 minutes that you can do something in. Sometimes you've got a longer period that you can do things in. So it's quite good to perhaps put some times against some of those goals and how long you might need to do something. Um, you know, reading a family history magazine, for example, I know now that I can, A, um, I've got the Libby app on my phone, which links into my local library. I know that I can get the Family Tree magazine on that. So if I'm sitting in a car somewhere, or I'm sitting waiting in a, a waiting room somewhere, I know that I could be reading some articles, for example. So knowing that those things take five, 10, however long I've got, means that I know that I can get that done. If it's something like batting off a quick email to someone or replying to a message, I might need 15 minutes. If it's getting down to some really good, good research or really writing up some long stuff, maybe I'm going to want a longer session. And so part of choosing that time and sorting out that time is the idea that you actually need to think about how long do you need and when can you do it? Now, you guys have been great this year because on one Tuesday of the month, you've managed to make time to come to this meeting. So it's a little bit like that as well. Do you need to actually make time that becomes your family history time? And I know I'm the worst at this because I do it all day, every day. It means that when it comes to doing my own family history research, I'm, I'm a little bit tired of it. So often the only time I get to do my own is when I'm actually writing a talk, which I've discovered is the best way to get my research done. Uh, so what you may find is you need to say, well, actually, Tuesday nights work really well for me. Maybe every Tuesday night is when I do family history or every Tuesday morning or something like that. And if you make that time, then it just becomes unavailable in your diary for anything else. And you know you'll get through these goals. So picking that can be really useful. Um, I like Janet's comment, useful to see where I might have to stop because I've got a commitment that month. It is really useful to know because sometimes we then start to feel a little bit guilty. And if we haven't done anything or frustrated because we haven't had time to do things, it's OK. Family history is great. You can pick it up, put it down. It's, it's not going to go anywhere. Um, so it does give you that chance. So who thinks they've got something on there that they could do in like five, 10, 15 minutes on their list? Or is everyone booking out their whole week just to do family history? Cool. Okay, so we've done a little bit about time. We will come back to time in, in a few minutes too. But let's talk about organisation. Now, this is what I call happiness. Um, this was the end result of lockdown for me. Every piece of paper that I have in my family history is now filed. It has a home. 
it's in a folder, it's in a system that means I can find exactly what I've got. Um, and once they're in the paper format, the filing system is replicated in my digital format as well. So although I don't have everything scanned, there's just not enough hours in the day, um, I do at least have a good solid system hiding underneath that. Um, if you want my system, you can. if you go to my Memories and Time website, um, a little pop-up will pop up and say, do you want to be on my newsletter list? And I'll send you how I've done it all. But basically, um, it's by colour. Each grandparent has a colour, red, blue, green and yellow. Uh, you'll see them that they also potentially have a box. Those box hide things like uh, old cassette tapes, uh, some books, um, little books like diaries and things like that. Um, I think there's some hair in some of those as well, and envelopes. Strange and unusual things that don't fit in folders. Um, but I've also got my DNA match chart folders and my project folders on those shelves as well. And the purple folders is my family tree for my um, five day ancestry chart challenge. So they sit there all the time. And the great thing about being organized is I know I can find anything when I want to work on a project. Because when I'm working on a project, I like to gather everything together. So if I've got a project to write something, I want to put as much of that writing stuff in one place. So because I know we're working on the Brooker book at the moment, I have actually done all the Brooker part of the filing um, of my mother-in-law's notes. I've now transferred her system to my system because that's what makes sense to my brain. And I've got that already, which means I know what's there. I know what's in paper format. I've still got to do the digital files, but I know what's in paper format, um, which most of the stuff is, so that I can actually find the images to put back into the book for the second time round that we're publishing it. Find the certificates that in 1991, the whole scanning process wasn't perhaps quite the same as what we have now. So I know where all that material is and I can work on that project. So pulling them together in a physical format and also pulling them together in a digital format. I like to copy the things that I need for that project into the folder. Um, I don't move them, I just copy them because then I can work on that particular project and know everything is there in one place. Um, so that's what I like to do when I'm working on a particular project and I do that with my client work as well. But the other thing I like to have is a research planner. And so this research planner helps keep me sane. Um, so there is a guide on my website you can go and grab and it says about how to create a research planner and I will show you an image of it sooner. But it does mean I know what I need to do next. So it's like setting goals for my research as much as anything else. Um, especially useful if you have things that you need to do that are out of town. Um, so if I know that I've got a whole list of things that need to be done in Wellington, it's good to know that maybe the next time I'm in Wellington, maybe I can scrape a sneaky hour out of there to whip to National Archives. Or I think, Sarah, you were talking about when we first came in about the fact that you'd been up to Auckland and you had an hour at the Family Research Centre and actually being knowing what to do. Yeah, look, if, if I've had a plan of who to research, then I, I'm, I mean, I found some great stuff just loitering in the Canterbury section of the of the library. But if I'd had a plan, then I, yeah, would have come out of it feeling I've achieved something rather than, oh, I've just found these interesting things. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing like ticking off something off your goal list or off your research yeah. plan and saying, yep, I've actually done that and I don't need to think about that again. So I like having things on my research planner because it does give you a sense of achievement. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that, as I say, as we go on. Um, the next section is to think about education. So that's to think about, do you need to actually learn something this year to be able to make some of your goals come through and be achieve those goals and succeed with those goals? And so, Education is an interesting thing um, and this is my education folder where I put all my handouts, for example, when I've been to a class. Just even being able to find those is a really good start. Um, and one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, because I don't think we've really talked about this in the genealogy world so much, is about note taking. 
And I know that you guys are sitting there tonight as we do this, and I've at least given you some paper that you can sort of be scribbling uh, little bits on as we go along if you've printed them out. But note taking is a unique thing to each of us. And whether you take them in a printed form, whether you type them up on a tablet or type them up on a computer, um, you do potentially want to keep some notes of some description. Now, some people are really good at just remembering everything. Let's get it there. Other people like to write, you know, a page up and it's got lots of bullet points on it. And some people like writing full sentences about their notes. Other people will like drawing pictures and mind mapping it and doing lots of different stuff going off in all different directions. I know some people like to draw pictures. Some people like to doodle in the corners as they're writing their notes. But one thing I found really useful, and I don't know whether any of you have ever done this, so you tell me if you've ever done this particular little online questionnaire. It's called VARC. Um, and I learned about this way back, I can't remember when I was learning to teach or when I was learning actually before that. Has anyone done VARC before? Just looking to see if anyone's going to write any comments or shout out about it. Well, I can say that I haven't, but it looks intriguing because, of course, everybody does learn in different ways and having some idea of what the way you do it is always good. Yeah, so this is a really short questionnaire. It's multi-choice. And what it helps you work out is whether you are a visual learner, an oral learner, a read-write, or a kinesthetic. Now, I know and I'm trying to teach my kids this, I am not an oral learner. So somebody coming to me and telling me a whole lot of instructions, like imagine someone telling you how to get from one place to another and all they tell you is the, the verbal instructions. That wouldn't work for me. I would be lost. Um, so I know that I'm much better with visual. I quite like kinesthetic and that I like to be able to do as I'm learning. Um, and I like to have the backup of the written material. Um, so you may find out how you like to learn because that has a huge bearing on how you then take your notes and what how, how you learn. Um, so if I go and listen to a genealogy lecture and there's no PowerPoint, that's not so good for me. Um, so I've got to have something that I'm writing down in front of me at the same time. So I've got to have written notes that I can write down. I might never, ever refer to those notes again. But for me, it's the link between me writing it down on paper helps to put it in my brain for later on. Um, I might refer back to them, especially if it's got a web link or something like that. But often it's just that concept of how to do something that I'm trying to learn. And as I say, writing it down for me helps a whole lot to keep me focused while I'm listening to somebody else speak. And I'm, I'm just think, sitting here thinking, gosh, I hope I haven't lost half of you already. Uh, because you're all not oral learners as well. Hence why I'm trying to put some photos and pictures up in front of you to keep you stimulated. Um, so you may find that quite an interesting thing to do. And I found it really good to also do with like, the younger members of the family as well and other members of your family just to find out what your communication styles are like. Um, yeah, mind maps, Linda. I Every talk that I do will be mind mapped before I do anything else um, because it helps me to keep track of what I'm doing and to take it off into different directions. But it, it is really important because you may find that using colour on your notes helps, etc. But the biggest thing with notes as well is um, you don't want them to become this, which is out of sight, out of mind. So you know how you've sat there one day and you've sort of gone, hmm, I've got this real problem with my research, but and I'm sure I read something about this somewhere, or I'm sure that I maybe went to a lecture on this, or I did something. How did I do it? So you need to work out how best to take those notes. Um, do you need to get a highlighter out and highlight things in them, etc. Um, as I said, I like also to add ideas to my research planner. So if I'm sitting there reading Family Tree magazine, um, and if you got fam if you get Family Tree magazine, the English one, you'll actually find this research planner in there. 
um, because I had an article on one of the issues this year. And so you can be reading Family Tree Magazine, see a website, see a something and go, actually, I should check that out at some stage and add it to your research planner. That's one of those five minute things. It doesn't take long just to add that into your research planner or add it into a notebook so you know to go and follow it up later on. Stick a post-it note on the page if the magazine's yours to keep. There's lots of ways that you can do it so that you have those bring up systems effectively to remind you of what you next need to do. Um, and as I say, the only thing I'm thinking about tonight as I was writing up the, the rest of this lecture was the idea that I might put a time column onto my research planner so I can find all the five minute tasks or the half hour tasks, et cetera, in there because that could be a really useful extra thing to put in there to filter. Version two coming soon. Um, the other thing is we also have so many things available to us. Um, if you've been to a Roots Tech in the past online, you can create your playlists of all of the things that you want to listen to. And some of us are probably still working through the playlist from this year, let alone last year or the year before. And so when we've got goals, the thing that that helps us to do is to focus. And so what you want to be thinking about is, OK, I've now got some goals. So what of my education do I need to actually succeed with those goals? So you may find that Legacy Family Tree webinars, for example, has some webinars that would be useful to you. You may just decide you just want to learn in general, um, and which is really great because they actually have a, a like a Google, a Gmail, Google calendar that you can have a stream added and it shows you when all the Legacy Family Tree webinars are on. Um, if you go to their website. If you want, you can download the schedule. Now, I've downloaded a page from the 2023 schedule. I know that the 2024 one is not very far away from being released. So you can still do your planning, but there is still time to get some things done. So, for example, you might want to dive in and listen to Kathy Sherwood on the 5th of December because it's a nice New Zealand time one um, and Australian time one, and it's called Can You Write a Wrong? Copyright in Australia which let's face it is pretty similar to copyright in New Zealand. So you may find that there's lectures there that will actually help you. So look for the ability to put them in your calendar. And in fact, there's that time thing again. Make sure you're booking the time into your calendar for doing your research. Look to download schedules and highlight the ones that you really want to go to during the year. You may find that you actually can go back and look in the webinar library itself. Um, they seem to have had real, um, quite a, a sort of run of things on the gold rushes. So you've got gold, gold, gold in the Klondike with Jill. Uh, you've got gold fever and finding miners down under with Shauna Hicks. Um, and worth more than gold or silver, <laughs> which is a great title for one about naturalisation. So you may find that there's already lectures that will help you achieve some of your goals. And I've given you Legacy Family Tree webinars, but there's lots of other places that you can find lectures as well. And what's really great is as you are working through these, you can be ticking them off the list. So you need to be thinking about what things need to be on your list to help you get further. Um, and if AI is one of those things, this is the thing I'm allowed to tell you about because it's only been released today, is that next year I'm teaching three workshops with Andrew Redfern at the Family History Academy on navigating the AI frontier for genealogists. And what's really cool about that is one of those two hour sessions is aimed at the writing process. Um, so there's three two hour sessions um, and that's American dollars. Sorry, I should have put that in there. Um, but, you know, AI might be on your list because AI is huge at the moment and has lots of fun things that you can do for family history and genealogy. How many of you have played with it or dabbled with it at all? Maybe put in the chat if you have. And if you haven't found the chat, it's probably at the top of your screen going chat or conversation or something like that. OK. Now let's talk about the planning stage. Oh, I'll just wait for the three dots are dancing on my screen at the moment. I'll just see what. Comes out of those. Oh, then they disappear. There we go. Uh, yeah, when your son showed you. 
Yeah, it is different. It's different indeed. OK, if you are doing some writing, you are going to need a plan around the writing as well. And that's not just planning your time. It's also planning what you're going to write. Um, it could be about the theme. It could be about the audience. It could be about the type of book you're having, what tools you're going to need and when it needs to be ready by. Um, this was part of what I did for the plan to publish. This webinar is on my website for free, so you can go and get that. It was given a few years ago for the NZSG. Um, so you can go and start planning this. But one of the quickest things that you can do is maybe next time you're at a library, go and have a look and see what others have done. Um, it's a really good way of finding out what you like in a family history book um, in comparison to perhaps what you don't like in a family history book. Um, it doesn't hurt to take the odd photo of some pages. Maybe you like how someone's laid something out. Um, maybe it's the shape of the book. Um, maybe it's the quantity of text to how many images. So it's a nice way of sort of getting a bit of an idea as you're looking at what your end result's going to be. Um, the other thing to think about is what sort of type of book that you want to do. Is it lots of words? Or are you planning to put in there lots of photos? So I know, um, was it, who was telling me about photo books just then? My mind's gone blank. It's Bobby, Linda or Di, I think have talked to me tonight. And then, uh, that's right, it was Di after your reunion, wasn't it? You're talking that's about right. your photo books. Yes. So you may decide photo books are the best way to go in comparison to writing a book with lots of text that no one ever reads. Um, and they're a really excellent way of doing that. And I've got a, maybe a shortcut for you, Di, that you might like the look of in a minute. Um, but also, as you go on, you'll also find that your research goals will change during the year. So, you know, I went and gave a talk and suddenly someone in the audience came up to me afterwards and goes, do your urquits come from Aberdeenshire? And I'm like, yes. And he goes, I think we're related. And it's the first time someone's ever actually sort of come up to me and said that, which was very exciting. Um, and he had two extra generations on the family tree. So now I've got to add that to my goals because I need to go and look at those and work out, can I see how he's worked this out? Does he have proof? Does he have enough proof that will meet my sort of requirements, um, et cetera? So it's quite exciting when you're finally maybe going to get through any brick walls. So let's celebrate because it's 2023 at the moment. And what are we going to achieve in this next year? So you've got some goals, you've got some thinking, but then I think you've made a little bit of a mistake because actually a new year starts every day. So I know that we sort of talk about goals and we go, actually, January is the start of the new year. That's when we make all our goals. However, today is the start of a new year as well. So you can actually make goals from now and actually get other things done by the end of 2023 to perhaps either lead into 2024 or maybe you're thinking about something that you can get done in this next month to be able to give for people for Christmas presents because things don't have to be big projects to make for Christmas presents. So, for example, a couple of things that are on my website, you could do some modern family trees. This is an easy sort of writing, bit crafty, bit of fun. Um, I've put mine in my colours because you know I like my colours, my red, blue, yellow and green because it made a whole lot of sense. Um, but my friend Jenny, she made one for each of her great nieces and nephews. She found out what their favourite colour was and they all got a four generation family tree. I've chopped off the bottom so you're not seeing the names in there as well. So that was one year, but then the following year or maybe two years later, she did these really cute little ancestor pen portraits books. And these are little flip photo books, which is sort of what Di is thinking about with her photo books. But these ones are only four by six. And so she took whatever colour the child had, and I've just blanked out the child's name on the front of this one. She took that colour and made it the cover of their book. And she did a couple of photos and the bare basic facts about someone in a page of writing. Because even if you can get that much shared out there, it's got to be good. They've got the starts then to be able to ask lots of questions later on. And if you're making lots of them for grandchildren or great nieces and nephews, 
what you'll find is a lot of them have the same information in there. Um, this was a pretty basic four generation sort of idea. Um, really, they only needed the first generation of who mum and dad and who grandparents were, and then the rest of them were all the same because it was only on that sort of one line of the family. Um, the other thing we did a couple of years ago is we made family recipe cards and turned those into either cards or books or tea towels. Um, you can take those family recipes and you can do a whole lot of fun stuff with them and get them out. And it might just be one recipe card that you stick inside your Christmas cards when you send them out or in the Christmas stocking or wrapped up with a gift. Um, and that's a nice way of sharing maybe a story about someone in your family at the same time as passing on that tradition of food and sharing kai and that sort of thing as well. And then my gift to you is that if you like the idea of getting organised and you wanted to find out more about my organising kit, I thought you might like a 20% discount um, if you want to buy it. Now, the organising kit has all those nice folder spines, it has all the indexes, it has a nice big long version of the guide on how to get organised, um, and it's in the store now. And now is a good time to also be thinking about gifts because people keep asking you this really random question of what would you like for Christmas? Um, and if they're not asking that, what are you buying yourself for Christmas? So this is a good time to look at that education list, look at that goals list and go, what would be really good for me? And I know that one thing I have is I have a list of certificates tagged of I need to buy this certificate um, because I'm quite geeky and buying me flowers and smelly things doesn't really do it for me for Christmas. Um, so you may find that there's maybe a class that you want to do that someone can buy for you or put some money towards or your membership for the year or something like that. And then, as I said, I did get through one of my goals. Here is my photo book that I actually got together to share with my brother. Um, the photos have no labels at all because basically I was replicating my mother's photograph album. Um, so everything is laid out the way she had laid it out, but of course she was in one of those little slip in your Instamatic photo albums. Um, I even photographed the cover of the album to put on the cover of the book as well. And it's a really nice thing to be able to do is to share these things that we've got. And um, now I've got to come up with a new idea for this year for them. Um, so any questions at all? Right, folks, have you got any questions? You probably could put your cameras back on and so sure can. Fiona can see your lovely face, including me. I'll do that as well. It's always a bit interesting talking into the void, as I like to say. But um, sure is. yeah, you stop that share. I'll be Lots able to see more of your beautiful support. faces. <laughs> Definitely lots of food for thought in there. I have to so say who's that got some nice writing goals for next year. Or who's yes. in the middle of a writing goal, perhaps? Who's Oh, I know Bobby and Brian have been busy writing because we've been printing a lot of articles of theirs and the New Zealand genealogists. So that's great to see. And you should yes, all be like Bobby and Brian. See, now that's a good thing to put on your um, yearly calendar is what the themes are for the magazine. Yes. Yes, so that would so. be a really good thing to get copied into that calendar. Linda. Yep. Yep. You need we to can't hear you at the moment, Linda, because you're muted. Okay. I'd really like to know um, something about publishing software. Mm -hmm. um, I'm told that using Word and putting my photos into Word doesn't print particularly well. Hmm, Does I, I do exactly that. I use oh, Word, okay. and I put my photos into Word um, and do absolutely exactly that. Yeah. And at the moment, I'm just finishing up with a client and we've just written pretty much, it's just going to come under a thousand pages. It's right. A and, big book. And who's and printing it? Um, I'm taking it to, uh, well, he's taking it just to a copy and print place. We have broken it up into multiple volumes. Yeah. So we try, he only gets them spiral bound um, right. because that's his choice on how he wanted to publish it, but they could be perfect bound or however else you wanted them done. 
mm. um, and we've broken them into books that are around 350 although I have got one or we brought over one that we did a couple of years ago and it's 400 pages in one spiral bound book um, and so there's a couple of things I do um, like I when I put images into well there's a few things I do one is I absolutely use styles and word Styles. My headings. styles oh yes yes of course yep, yeah yep, yep yep and if you don't know what styles are I've got a guide about those Yep, and the I other do. thing I do is I use tables and I yes. put all my images into tables um, and then attach the captions to those because then the captions stay with the photos when you move them around a whole lot easier and text wow. wraps a whole lot easier. And I have pretty much standardized exactly how big I want the boxes to be on the page. Um, right. So I know that you know, a half page table of seven and a half centimetres wide. If I make the photo that wide, I get a half page photo. So it's all, it's standardised through the whole book. Yeah. And I've also got a couple of little macros that I run through it, which do a little bit of tidying up for me. Um, and I also have found a nice little piece of code that will run a contents over all the different parts. Because as I'm doing my Word documents, I might have it broken into 10 different sections just because the files yeah. get too big and my computer suddenly decides it's really had enough. Mm. Um, and so I will break it down into multiple sections, but I've found a nice little bit of code that will go through and put contents over all of those different Word documents as right. such. I, I think um, probably I've had a, a house sitter staying for the last few days and he's a publisher and he's just about driven me bloody bonkers um, with clean, clean script and clean, um, clear photographs and, and photoshopping it. And by the time he left, I was nearly going crazy. So I was glad something was coming on tonight. <laughs> oh, was, look, don't, uh, it's just, don't get me it's, wrong. It is difficult just to. Yeah, don't get me wrong. If I had a choice, I'd probably do it in InDesign. But yeah, I know. I could, We're I working on it together. Yeah, load that onto my computer. It's so big. Yeah, um, and, and expensive. It is, and I find also with Word, I use Word to create the basis mm. of my photo books as well. Yes, so, so do I. Yes, I I don't do the photo book straight into the photo book software because uh, as soon I, as you do that, you have a problem with what they like things to be laid out as. And, and do you have to change each of your pages into a JPEG? I do change each of the pages into the JPEG, but I cheat because I save it as a PDF. Yes. <laughs> and then I export the PDF into JPEGs. For JPEG, yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And so That's all you've right. got to do. I'm on the right track. <laughs> yep. So even, even this little four by six one. Yes. As she puts her fingers over it. You just set up a word template as a four by six. Yes. Set up your pages a four by six, and then you can type and make your pages and get your word pages. And then your photos are probably easier for that one because you probably are doing something pretty standard with your photos. Mm. Well, I've been clearing, cleaning some of them up in um, my heritage program. Mm -hmm. um, it sort of cleans them up a bit before you put them in. Yeah, the um, other one I use is Vivid Picks. Vivid um, Picks. Vivid picks. So I have a code. I will find my code for that. Actually, I haven't used that. Put that code back on my website yet. Um, but it's a nice little piece of software that you can use. Um, let me just find that. And it's this one here. Um, that is an affiliate link. Oh, just okay. finished three years. Janet's just finished three years research for a local history book and launched it in October, and she's resting there. That is totally understandable. <laughs> I, I understand that. I, as I say, I am on the last bit of formatting for this book that we've been working on all year, and yeah, I'm I'm ready to rest as well. <laughs> But, but then it's a good we'll time when you year. rest to start writing down the things you want to do because I always find, you know, the second I go away, like over the summer, I'm busy. I start writing lists. 
when I get home, I'm yeah. doing this and I'm doing that and I'm doing this, 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 this. this and I yes. plan it out and I go, right, where am I shopping? What do I need? All these sorts yeah. of so things. So you can take, so, you, you take your goal sheet with you and, mm, and just add some yeah. things to it. Um, I yeah. must admit, I, when we go camping for a week over summer and I take my, um, my book, I write all my mind maps for my talks in because I'll mind map some talks while I'm away because my brain will actually have time to rest and start getting creative again and coming up with some new ideas. So if anyone's got ideas of what you'd like me to write a talk on, that would be really cool <laughs> as well. Because <laughs> then I could be percolating a little bit before I get to that stage. Yes. Well, you, you could, um, you could do something on, on doing, um, tidying up photos. I'm tidying up photos. I like have a, you just suggested I, the vivid pics. Response. Yeah, um, I have exactly. <laughs> and that. you could also. Have... Yep, go Linda. Yeah, that that would be one. The other one would be um, actually a bit more about how you set out your pages and stuff for, um, you know, writing your book, making sure your margins are right, so you don't, you know, um chop it off or we'll mix it up or and, and stuff like that just some practical stuff that you know that I've just got myself bound up into a big 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 knot and, and I'm not yeah I'm not writing the um what is it the world's best book or anything but you know you'd like it to look reasonable mm. and um yeah no I'm a bit too much perfectionist I think I have to lower my standards <laughs> yeah well, my, budget doesn't, my budget doesn't run or my I'm not buying another computer to run a software pack it's just a yeah right, <laughs> yeah That's there's also it. things like canva out there which mm. you know if uh, you what was that don't one? have a canva yeah any good um if you don't have a a visual sense then looking at what other people have done yeah like you know for my branch I took a poster that I, I like the sort of shapes and the way it was laid out and then I completely changed it <laughs> you know putting our colors into it and our words into it but it, yeah. it just gave me that little nudge of inspiration of how to do it and so you know like Fiona said earlier on about going down to the library and seeing what other people have done because um that's what yeah. I, that's I did that and that's why I decided that I couldn't write like some of them were because they were, I would nobody would ever read them they were so freaking boring yeah, yeah. okay um I've just put a link in the chat to a website called photop.com yep uh -huh. um that's like photoshop yeah but it's free um you oh, might have to put up some a... ads um okay. if you ever do my recipe course or the modern family tree workshop which have both got videos we use photop in those I don't... um and he seems to be quite active in developing it. Um, All right. It's it's one step above Canva for a couple of techniques. Canva has some some things that are really really great, and but Photoshop slash PhotoP has some things that you can't do in Canva. Mm -hmm. um, in particular, when you start layering things over the top of each other and removing parts of things and masking and bits and pieces like that, um, which can be really useful to be able to do. Um, but if you're looking, if you're doing photo books and you want some pretty stuff to put on the page as well, there's lots of digital scrapbooking kits on my website. They're all JPEGs and PNG files that you can drop onto those books as well, or even just backgrounds. Yes. yes. Certainly lots out there to help you along. <laughs> sure is. Finding the time to go looking. Put that on your schedule. That's what you have okay. to learn about and do your education goals. Yeah, how to do these things. Yeah. Um, and it may just be finding a good website that gives you tips and hints and things on whatever tool you've decided to choose. Yeah. YouTube. YouTube is great. YouTube is especially great when you've broken the dishwasher and you want to know how to fix it. Oh, look, my daughter's taught herself how to crochet and she made a bumblebee last night. It was so cute. <laughs> oh, nice. 
and pumpkins for Halloween just from watching people on YouTube. So, you know, there's uh, a, <clears throat> yeah. Oh, that sounds great, Ken. A burnt out. Yeah. Yeah, 200 page perfect bound memoir. Yep. Yeah. And so in, in terms of finding printer, it does pay to ask around locally mm. who's who's printed stuff. I know, um, you know, a couple of branches have had books published and other people have had things published at a, a printer in Johnsonville here in Wellington. So, you know, they're a known quantity, you know, you know what you're going to get out of them. And um, that's, you know, it's always good to, good to get recommendations. So, you know what yes. you're, you're doing. Um, but, you know, sometimes just taking it down to warehouse stationery and chucking it through the colour printer is, comes out just as good. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's the Here binding. Christchurch, yeah, we use CQ Print. And in fact, I think that's that's who we use for the 2018 conference proceedings. Yeah. We use them. And I think actually we might have used them for the 2008 conference proceedings possibly <laughs> as well. Um, so, and I know that's where this particular client that I've been working with goes and gets his books published now. Um, for my photo books here in New Zealand, I use Diamond Print. Um, it's cheap reliable quick frozen um etc so diamond can be really good as well for those photo books um in australia i think you've got now nah, what's the photo book printing company in australia that the others were telling me about let me find the name of it i think it's something like just photo book actually you've got snapfish yeah, there's one there is one called yeah, photo book they have a new zealand one as well because they are spamming me them and Snapfish spam me consistent con mm. continuously, but I don't want to turn them off just in case I actually get around to printing a photo book and then I'm going to need the discount code. Yeah. <laughs> um, photo Book Australia, I believe, has lots of things. And the biggest thing with photo books is just look for when they have the specials. So like Photo yes. Book Australia at the moment has got buy one, get one free on photo books. Yeah. Uh, buy one and get – buy one – Buy one free three calendar deals. That sounds good, doesn't it? So, you know, calendars are a great way of sharing your family history as well this time of the year. Oh, and yeah. especially um, when the school doesn't do them anymore. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> buy one. I don't know. Buy one free three. Uh, yeah, for four identical copies. Gosh, that's going to be a good deal. Yeah, I might have to do that, actually. <laughs> I'm, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm, I'm presuming I'm going to go to Photo Book New Zealand now just to check. I wonder if we get the same <laughs> deals. And now I'm going to get all the all the um, ads, aren't I? Um, yeah. So let's see Once if we get the, the same list, deals as Australia is getting. Yep, buy one, get three free calendars. If they're all printed the same. Well, and free shipping free. deals. <laughs> yeah. Um, and if you're clever, you could even put the recipes on it at the same time. Or a little bit of family history on each page. Yeah. One little story. Yeah, memento is best, I agree, but it is expensive. So I would want be wanting to make it that would bring out the perfectionist gene in me most definitely um, if I was to do a memento book. <laughs> but the great thing about photo books is if you find out something later on because some records suddenly appeared, you're not going to be gutted that it's not in the book because with a photo book, it's relatively quick and easy to reprint. Yes. And especially good for the kids because are you going to be worried if the kids break a $6 book? Probably no. not. And, so, I, and I have actually, one of the books I printed for my daughter when she was a baby that she pulled apart, I actually got reprinted as a hardback mm. so that, you know, she has a one that's not, and 15 different pages all over the place. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. And that's it. That's a great thing. And and taking some of those family stories and turning them into children's books type stories can be quite fun as well. Yeah. One of our branch members did a photo book on pets the family had owned. And so she did that for the grandchildren, little stories about the pets that the family had had over the very... Yes, years that, you know, obviously she had some good photos and things too. But, uh, yeah, you can go out on a tangent on some of these things when it's for the grandchildren. 
<laughs> but um, Linda, you were asking about photo classes. I have had a, I have got a photo class. I haven't run it for a long time. Maybe I should look to put that in the schedule for next year. I'll try and fit that in somewhere. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be, yeah, that will be very useful. Okay, well, I think I'm going to wrap things up now. So thank you, Fiona. You've certainly given me far too many things to put on my to-do list for next year. <laughs> Every time you said something, I'm like, oh, yeah, I need to be doing that as well. So um, going to be a busy year, hopefully. Like this year, no, hopefully not. Um, <laughs> but thank you for coming along and presenting to us. And uh, we'll put the recording up on the website. So if you want to go back and check... Uh, what Fiona said or to remind you of some of the things you need to be doing you know, or how to fill in the forms that she's kindly provided then um, yeah that'll be there available to you so thank you all for coming along uh, the next one of these is next year I'm going to say because I can't remember whether it's February or January February. but um, you won't be able to miss it because Megan will send it, all the details out to you and I wish everybody uh, a happy summer. Hopefully the weather will be warm, not too windy and not too wet, unlike last summer. Uh, <laughs> and we can all enjoy it. So thank you all. Uh, Thanks, everyone. Bye. <laughs>